Hi, and welcome to this presentation. My name is Mahmoud Al Nasri. I'm a pavement design manager with Tarmac. This presentation will discuss pavements for different applications. First of all, we'll give you a brief background about the function of the pavements and why there are different pavements for different applications. Then we will cover the characteristics of different pavements for different applications, including highways, urban and state roads, industrial pavement, and airfield pavement. So to start with, what is the function of pavement design? Pavement design objective is to provide a structure able to distribute the load safely to the underlying subgrade as well as providing riding quality. So if we have a weak pavement and a strong pavement on a subgrade, a typical subgrade, when you apply the loading on the weak pavement, the stresses generated in the subgrade will be very high and this will result in damages or distresses in the subgrade, consequently damages and distresses on the pavement itself. When, when you while when you apply loading on the strong pavement, the distribution will be very well, resulting in lower stresses in the subgrade and no damages will be on the subgrade or the pavement itself. Then you need to ask why it is different then if the principle is the same. There are many reasons. The first one is design. When you apply the loading, different loads are on different pavements. In difference here, we mean the magnitude of the loading and the speed itself. An airplane is not the same as the cycle or as a vehicle such as a car or heavy good vehicles. All these types of vehicles can generate different stresses on the pavement. The second reason is materials and environment. There are different materials used in the pavement, including asphalt, concrete, hydraulic bound material, and granular materials. These, every one of these will have different properties than the other. Even within the asphalt, the most common road used material for construction, there are wide range of material types, including the upgraded materials such as the high HRA, hot rolled asphalt, DBM, dense pitch, I mean macadam, which is part of the continuously graded group. There is porous material, which relatively has lower stiffness than the others. TSCS, thin, thin surface core systems, which is being developed as part of the stock from the stone mastic asphalt. And there is the French EME2 strong material. There is technologies like warm asphalt and others. So there are different types even within each, with even within asphalt group. And this will result in different behavior and different stiffness or strength. Also, we need to consider the environment. For the asphalt, it is created from bitumen with aggregate mixed at different proportion depending on the material required. And bitumen is the main controlling element. Bitumen is a viscoelastic material. Being viscous or elastic depends on the temperature and the loading frequency. At low temperature and or high loading frequency or speed, or it is more of an elastic materials. As these environment exceed, the material becomes very stiff or it can crack or be subjected to cracking. On the other extreme, when the temperature is very high and the low and or the loading frequency is very low, the material is a viscous material behaving as chocolate or something very soft, which means that it is more susceptible to rotting. In ambient conditions, it is a viscoelastic material. So the asphalt mixture itself has a different behavior or properties depending on the environment, i.e. the speed and the temperature. 
third reason is the surface characteristics. By this, we mean the riding quality and noise. In terms of riding quality, skidding resistance is frictional properties of the road surface in wet condition. There are two main parameters that control the skid resistant or resistance. The first one is the texture depth at micro scale, at macro scale, and at the micro scale we have the micro texture. The fine or the micro texture provided by the surface of aggregate particles or by the fines in the mixture is the main contributor to the skid resistant resistance at low speed. At higher speeds, both the texture depth and the micro textures affect the skid resistance. So if we have a control on these micro and macro textures, different application will need different properties in terms of skid resistance. Finally, in terms of managing the pavement or whole life costing, you can say, reliability and the maintenance is a big consideration. Reliability is the probability that the pavement section will perform satisfactory over the design period. This must take into account for uncertainties in the traffic loading, environmental condition, and construction materials. For instance, airports cannot afford frequent closure for maintenance, so this is a big consideration for airports, for example. So these are the main reasons for having different pavements for different applications. As we mentioned, the loading, the environment materials, the surface characteristics, and the reliability on and maintenance of the pavements. The first and common uh, design in the pavement is the highways or high speed highways. Typically, um, the design traffic for this one is only considering heavy good vehicles above 3.2 tons. So anything below 3.2 tons, i.e. cars, motorbikes, um, cyclists, pedestrian, is negligible in the design. We only consider HGV above 3.2 tons. And typically, the, uh, the design uh, for the pavement here lasts for 40 years. It should be considered and mentioned that when we say 40 year design life, this means the overall structure of the pavement, not the surfacing or the base and the sub base. It is mainly the overall pavement uh, thickness. In some instances, the surface course usually lasts about 10 to 15 years on average. So this will be replaced within 10 to 5 years in terms of the surface course. The below, the below layers, the base and the sub base, will last mainly for 40 years. In terms of design, there are mainly two methods, uh, the empirical and the analytical. The empirical is mainly very conservative uh, because it's only based on experience and experiment, while the analytical, uh, which is based on determining exactly uh, how much stresses and or strains developed within the design um, calculated, and based on that, the design traffic uh, that can be carried out can be determined uh, from these stresses. And it is less conservative and allows for thinner pavement to be designed. Typically here in the UK, the design manual for roads and bridges, uh, known as the DMRB, used for the design of highways or motorways, um, including the CD uh, T24 uh, for the traffic assessment, CD225 for the foundation, and the CD226 for the overall pavement thickness required. These were released uh, last year in 2020 uh, as an update for the DMRB design manual for roads and bridges. In terms of the surface requirement, uh, skid resistant texture and noise, these are very essential and need to be considered in the design. In general and relatively, um, motorways or highway speeds uh, road uh, where the speed is very high, uh, connecting between different cities um, requires low maintenance uh, frequency. The second type is urban and state roads. 
these are generally subjected to light vehicles uh, with occasional HGVs like uh, refusals, uh, fire truck, or deliveries. The honest answer here, little real engineering design involved. Mainly, um, the, the engineering part is how to develop a cheaper or easier form of constructions. There are some standards uh, for advice available. Mainly or generally speaking, they are over design. Uh, the experience here is the ultimate solution. The second or the third characteristic is the for these types of roads uh, is the speed is very low and the riding quality is really insignificant. However, consideration for high stresses areas where indonation type turning or maneuvering <coughs> is, is, is considered here. And this can be um, tackled by providing a very good uh, material to um, avoid these stresses. Again, uh, in-house pavement design for sustainable solution can be provided uh, by Tarmac. For instance, the table below shows uh, or compares um, one design guide providing um, the required thicknesses uh, for public car park and Tarmac in-house solution, where you can see clearly how much thicker or thinner uh, pavement uh, is provided by the Tarmac in-house pavement design using Tarmac material which results on, on saving around 100 mil thickness. Moving on, uh, the third design pavement of the pavement considered here is the industrial pavement, which includes uh, ports, docks, uh, distribution houses, uh, industrial and commercial developments. Here, the design loading is considerably high, not only the vehicles uh, need to be considered for the design, but also uh, stockpiling uh, containers. Anything with a high loading should be considered for the within the pavement design. In calculating the uh, your design or the, your loading your loading design is to calculate actually the critical or the effective stresses uh, in your uh, pavement. Typically, when a vehicle moves in the pavement, there will be an overlap of these stresses between the wheels. As distance becomes closer between the wheels, this generates higher combined stresses in the pavement overlap. And this is known as wheel spacing factor and should be considered in the design. The second or consideration for the design uh, is to apply dynamic factors and these uh, applied where a section of the pavement is subjected to dynamic effects such as cornering, uh, braking, uh, etc. Uh, the third step in your design is to calculate the number of passes um, at one point during the design, design, design life. Um, and and uh, it should be considered uh, when the loading and the lo unloading vehicle uh, in, the, in, the, in the design. And finally, uh, within the design step is to calculate the critical stress or strains or uh, using the finite element method, method or uh, using another other standards available like heavy duty uh, pavement interpave. The other consideration is the riding quality here is insignificant. And finally, um, some degree of, of deterioration is generally is often acceptable. But most parking areas owners would be unhappy if their pavement were to become too much of an eyesore. Um, the channel here for the engineer um, is to come up with a solution which are suitably inexpensive yet provide the operator or the operation level uh, a good level of service. Finally, um, the airfield uh, pavement. The International standard design of the pavement for the air feed is known as the ACN PCN method. ACN is the expression of loading, uh, expression of the loading severity on the pavement by a single wheel, which is, has a tire pressure of 1.2 MPA that induces a flexure stress of 2.75 Newton per millimeter squared. PCN um, is the ACN of the aircraft, 
which imposes severity of loading equal to the maximum permitted on the pavement of unrestricted use. The PCN method uh, includes five parts uh, to be known as the first one, um, the highest ACN avail uh, uh, allowable. The second part uh, is the P type, pavement type, uh, whether it's flexible or rigid. And the third part is the subgrade category, ranging from A, high, um, high, 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 which high, has high uh, stiffness, to the D, which has the lowest uh, stiffness. And the fourth part is the maximum tear pressure, ranging from W, very high, to Z, very low. And finally, uh, the evaluation method, whether it's technical or you by experience. The frequency of the traffic range from low to high, and this also should be specified for the design. Uh, the total number of passes should be taken as the total number of movement and mixed traffic analysis used to consider the traffic, uh, the effect of aircraft operations at different weights. Um, as mentioned previously, uh, there is rigid um, pavement and flexible. Rigid um, is mainly PQC, uh, pavement quality concrete, and it can be either plain, reinforced, or pre-stressed. And which they, which um, this type of pavement distributes the aircraft loading to the subgrade by means of its high flexural stiffness, while the flexible pavement is composed of bound or unbound granular material, the mechanism is by distributing the aircraft load primarily through the sheer strength of the paving material. Um, as mentioned previously, it is very essential to keep the maintenance as low as it could be. Uh, this is because it's a very costly process to close the um, airfield. The, 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 in terms of uh, skid resistance, uh, it is very um, important and adequate skid resistance is required. Uh, skid resistance is the main pavement surface uh, characteristics that the, provide resistance between the aircraft tires and the ground to minimize uncontrolled craft and movements and controlled stops. In general, um, concrete is preferred where there is likely to be venting of fuel, spillage of lubrication oil. Uh, however, uh, new asphalt markets uh, developed uh, with the same level of resistance that can be used. Typical design standard for the airfield is DMG27 uh, for the UK designs. Internationally, also there are other, some available softwares like the Parafield and the ICO design standard. Thank you very much for listening and uh, please be in touch with the technical center here at Tarmac. We provide innovative pavement solution for any specific pavement application. Thank you.